Now, even as the Jubilee administration attempts to rein in the soaring food prices, the political rivals are using the high cost of living as a campaign fodder. But is the issue becoming too politicized at the expense of you, the Kenyan? Our political reporter Chris Tyro interrogates how the high cost of living is fast becoming a big election issue this August. For months now, Kenyans have been grappling with the high cost of living that continues to pinch deeper into the pockets of the common Mwananchi. The price of 2 kg packet of unga recently retailing at 170 shillings before the government intervened and subsidized the price down to 90 shillings. But despite the intervention, there has also waived duties on milk and sugar for a period of 90 days as a temporary measure. The prices of other essential commodities still remain high, including the rising prices of fuel. The challenges proved good ammunition for the opposition NASA, led by their president. This is KTN News. Results speak for themselves, with over 20 billion shillings now successfully delivered into the hands of the most vulnerable members of our society every single year. Uh, all right, we, we apologize for the technical hitch on that story. Let's just take that story again by Chris Sairu that paints a picture for us on how this is becoming a big political issue, this cost of living. For months now, Kenyans have been grappling with the high cost of living that continues to pinch deeper into the pockets of the common Mwananchi. The price of 2 kg packet of unga recently retailing at 170 shillings before the government intervened and subsidized the price down to 90 shillings. But despite the intervention, there has also waived duties on milk and sugar for a period of 90 days as a temporary measure. The prices of other essential commodities still remain high, including the rising prices of fuel. The challenges proved good ammunition for the opposition NASA, led by their presidential flag bearer, Raila Odinga, who will take on incumbent President Uru Kenyatta in the August 8th elections. But the government has been quick to caution the opposition against capitalizing on the high cost of living. Unga is affordable again to the ordinary Kenyan. And no matter the amount of debate or the amount of inquisition, uh, there is likely nothing that can be done to change that fact that two kilograms of unga cost 90 shillings. However, experts and policy makers of food security in the country insist that it is high time for the issue of food security is delinked from politicians. The policy issues that we have in the country are some of the best. The countries in the region and even um, far are using our policies. Uh, we have a problem in the implementation stage. And this is where maybe the politicians are capitalizing on. So we come up with the strategies, and those strategies, we leave them to the politicians to guide us on how to implement them. According to some policymakers, the government is also to blame for the crisis due to lack of effective coordination between the different agencies in government that are tasked to deal with food insecurity in the country. The Karama Kuraru project was a very good initiative. And one way that we shall be able to get out of where we are is to be able to utilize our water resources effectively. Um, 
who, now we are in the wrong lanes. And within a, a few days or a few months, the rains will be over. You will be surprised that within a week, we'll be complaining that we don't have water. Given that the measures that the government has taken are just temporary, it still faces the challenge of ensuring that the long-term measures are implemented and that the country is food secure heading into the future. Chris Dairokete News. All right, so that's the politics of Ugali, as some people have called it. And right now, I want to bring it my, my guests, two of them. Um, Moses Kajuang, Senator from Homa Bay, and uh, you survived that bloodbath that was happening around the country. So he's, he's going to run for the Senate again. And Senator Beatrice Elachi, uh, who is the nominated senator, but right now seeing a parliamentary seat, right, in Dagoretti uh, South. Thank you very much. No, sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, Probably that's the effect of <laughs> rising cost of living, Ugali. OK. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, lady and gentlemen. And we want to just start from where we had the politicians, politicians like yourselves, leave it off. And the question is, who is playing politics with our Ugali, Beatrice Elachi? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I don't know who is playing politics with our Ugali because one of the things I've At every said, rally we hear, every uh, politician. Right now, there's nothing else you're talking about. Well, um, one of the things I've always said is that uh, there are three things we can never joke around with. And one of them is your health, and your health goes with food. And uh, as a country, uh, I just want to bring us all together and ask ourselves a few questions which I think we ignore as we move on. First of all, uh, one of the things as a country, not just the Jubilee government, but all governments that have been there have ignored is to know that we multiply ourselves as we go, that we grow and uh, we give birth. And uh, as a, we have moved from 2 million to 10 million to 45 million now. And when I look at just Western, where I come from today, the population that is there and its young children, I think we are growing even more. So we need to ask ourselves, first of all, even as we debate about Ugali and as we politicize the Ugali, whether we are taking in consideration we are also growing as a nation and our numbers are growing. Uh, I know right now, uh, and I was shocked, uh, even though I'm not supposed to be shocked, that we eat three million bags in a month. So we need to ask ourselves, as we eat our Ugali, three million. But the, but the, um, but the Jubilee government did promise to deal with the issue of food that's security. That's why I don't, I, I don't want to go into that, that, the names of Jubilee or NASA. I need to ask them. When I look at both sides, they have been in this country for a so while. You are on one side uh, of uh, this divide. No, is... I'm on one side of this divide yeah. now. But I have seen both divides being at one point together, growing this nation. We did not uh, portray and ask ourselves as we move on to a nation where we are growing, are we looking at land as an issue, first of all? And two, are we looking at the challenges we face? And, and we'll talk about the land because I am aware there's a bill that you have been uh, talking about for three years. But Senator Kajuang, mm -hmm. The NASA principles have been talking about this over the last few weeks. Some people would say that this crisis didn't just happen. Someone should have seen it coming. Are you not just using this as some sort of uh, political fodder because now you think that the election is a few months away? Let's make this look like we really care about Kenyans. Uh, th thank you, Joe. Uh, social contract. Uh, the government that has the mandate right now to implement and safeguard the Constitution is the government that we have, uh, which we are calling the Jubilee Administration. In our Constitution, Article 43, 43.3, which Senator Ilach is very familiar with because she has sponsored a bill that uh, gives effect to Article 43.3, right gives to, every right Kenyan food, yes, yeah. a right to food and freedom from hunger. And so the government must ensure that Kenyans have got access to food and not just food. There is an issue of quality. In fact, that right talks about quality. It is not just food meant for cattle. It is but not just food ask, that is expensive. The question is I ask food that is, is, is that NASA says that they are the government in waiting, that they have alternative ideas on how to deal with this. So Kenyans are 
expecting that they will want to believe that you actually care about them, that you're not just talking about this because it is politically convenient now, that many people say that this crisis has been long in coming, that someone should have noticed it from the word go. And to the best of my recollection, I haven't had the opposition talk about food until like a couple of weeks ago. It has been an issue that we've been talking about, those of us who are elected and uh, who are in uh, the, the, the various assemblies. Joe, this is not just politics. This is a matter of life and death. The middle class might have different preoccupations, but the person down there on the ground, we go back to the basic human needs, food, clothing, and shelter. We are talking of the most basic at the base of the pyramid. So when it comes to a conversation about food, it should not be construed to be a political discussion. Have we agreed across the political divide that there was a problem? Yes. When we started talking about it, we were dismissed by our political competitors. And we were told that this is not an issue that is going to be an electoral agenda. But we saw the government intervene, intervene in a band aid kind of manner to diffuse the pressure and to get us back to a certain level. The conversation we should be having, Joe, is how do we ensure that Article 43.3, the right to food and freedom from hunger, is observed and is delivered to Kenyans. Now, we, we, we are saying that uh, the signs have been there. The signs have been there. And, and whereas the Jubilee administration takes the bulk of the blame, there are those also in parliament who are responsible for legislation and appropriation and budgeting uh, who and, can and, also and, take and, the blame. And I'll, I'll come to that in a, a moment. But uh, Senator Ilachi, uh, you cannot run away from the fact that you're part of the Jubilee uh, administration, the broader sense. I mean, the last couple of weeks, people had a choice to go independent, run in NASA, Jubilee, whatever, and you have chosen to run in Jubilee. That suggests yes. that you still believe in a lot of things that they are doing. What is your view of the response that we have seen from the government and the timing of it to this food crisis? First of all, I want to say, yes, I believe in the ideologies of Jubilee. And uh, I think when you look at 2016, when uh, at that time uh, farmers had planted and uh, I think everyone believed we'll have a good harvest. Uh, being a natural uh, drought, being natural and uh, as a government, I know. At one point, we looked at it, and I'll blame my government at one point, because uh, you remember when we had now the problems of worms coming in, and uh, some farmers even in Bomet started crying and saying, look, uh, we are having a challenge. Uh, yes, we have planted maize, but it's being up, uh, infected by the worms. And uh, at that time, I wish that both the national government and the county government, and especially the county government. And that is where now we have all these challenges that come in, that when you look at some of the things that we devolved, and there are things that are supposed to touch human life, and where now you want to now make the county government to be responsible, and yet at that time, you remember, uh, national government will have a way of saying, yes, we have to do this. County government, some of them will agree some will disagree with the issue. So it, 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 it is a matter of asking ourselves as government now in a holistic manner that how do we sit on a table and ensure that after 2016 when we realized that we, have been, we are having a challenge, and you can see in the south they had the same challenge, in the north there was the same challenge of drought. So all along we knew we will be affected by so, this. So the president said recently when he was in London that they that the government needed to wait for the stocks to be exhausted because then the farmers would complain. And we'll just play that soundbite in a moment, then we can get to that conversation. The president speaking in, in London just a few days ago. It's a chicken and egg. You import maize, farmers start to scream that you've imported cheap maize. So you have to wait until the very last minute before you import maize because until you see all the stores, you bought everything that is available in the local market. So we had to wait before we allowed importation because had we not done that, the minute we start looking at the consumer, the farmer would have been the one uh, 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 crying. 
yeah? both the sugar farmers, the, 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 the maize farmers. So it, it's a very delicate balance that one has to, to tread. Yes, thoughts, and, I, and, I, and I think because of politics, that's why we always, and that's why we always say when we mix everything with politics, we'll always have this challenge. Because indeed, if we had imported in maize before this, you will find every farmer, and not the farmers, because I know it's us politicians. And you could see even in the debate that we had in parliament with the minister, when I looked at the members of the National Assembly uh, grilling the minister, and I asked myself, why is it that we have committees in parliament? And uh, uh, what is the role of parliament after we've changed into uh, a more presidential system? Your role as the committee is to check. And uh, in my bill, what we were trying to do is, uh, as Senate, is to come up with committees that can give you early warnings, that can ensure your reserves are indeed with, uh, about to end. Let's say, for example, you have uh, 4 million bucks fine, and your, your, your net is coming to 2 million. I think you need to raise the red flag and say, look, if we are consuming 3 million bags in a month, then indeed we are already in a challenge. But some people have said that this was artificial in the sense that last year when the managing director of the cereals board appeared in parliament, he said that there had been a delay in the purchase of the maize that they were keeping in the silos and that some of it actually had been contaminated as a result of that. And some people have said, well, it looks like someone was just sitting back and saying, let the, the maize go bad so that then we have a crisis and then we can go out and buy. I mean, there is the whole thing of the farmers complaining, but there's also the bit of just managing what we have in a way that then is prudent and that allows us to respond in good time. I, I think one of the things I know we have lacked in our country is how we harvest even our maize. You find that, let's say, for example, in Western, uh, people don't have that capacity also to just harvest their maize in the right way. You find that people have harvested, you've left the maize in uh, the chamber for a while, and therefore the, the, the next day when you come in, you, when you take it now to the reserves for sales or to the cereal board, now they start bringing in all their ways of how they measure what is best, what is contaminated. But the, at the same time, I think what we need as a country, we need to ask ourselves, we will continue having, yes, challenges of uh, climate change. Therefore, maize might be a challenge to us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, how do we harvest and ensure the farmer also benefits? Because the other thing we have done, Joe, we have also left our the issue of going to the shambas. And you find that nowadays, even back home, you, you'd rather have border border than go to a shamba. So well, even I'm, as I'm, we speak I'm, about I'm, 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 all that, we have to ask ourselves, are we doing production at the right level based on the ratio of the population we have? Moses Kajuang, do you buy the president's story? No, I, I listen to the president. It's a continuation of the narrative of helplessness that uh, has characterized his approach to corruption, and it is now characterizing his approach to food security. People, politicians, have blamed almost everything else. They've blamed drought. There's a difference between drought and famine. Drought is natural. Famine is man-made. In this country, we've got an authority called National Drought Management Authority that is being financed by taxpayers' money. Why are we not demanding accountability from it? We've got the remnants of the Special Programs Ministry, whose job was to look at these things. We've got the NCPB. We've got the Strategic Grain Reserve. We've got countries like Israel that are arid and semi-arid, and yet they are still producing. So drought cannot be an excuse. It is a natural phenomenon, but famine that we are experiencing is a man-made phenomenon. It has been blamed on many other things, millers and politicians. And I believe that the government, if it was responsible, it would take responsibility. And by intervening and coming up with that subsidy, it is some form of admission of guilt admission of culpability in this particular matter. Now, Joe, you have asked two things. But I mean, which, they're the which, government. They have a duty to respond oh, to oh, the crisis, of, of, regardless of, course, of who costs it. Of course. Initially, initially, they were a bit obstinate and were saying that, uh, you know, that's just opposition propaganda. And then what did we do? Senator Ilachi has just cited we consume three million bags per month. 
In fact, it's between 3.1 and 3.5 million, depending on who's giving the numbers. How many bags have we imported? 300,000, just one-tenth of the monthly consumption. Today, the State House uh, spokesman, Esipisu, was saying in a very arrogant manner that the fact remains that unga is at 90 shillings. My own wife has asked me, go and look for that unga and bring it home. Even the unga for 90 bob or the unga for 200 shillings, it is not there in the supermarkets because the subsidy is not enough to meet the needs of Kenyans. And ask yourself, Joe, the consumption patterns of Kenyans. I would, without uh, any scientific uh, background, I would tell you that 80% of Kenyans buy their maize in Gorogoro. That's in Homabi, where I come from. And 80% of these Kenyans, they grind that maize in portion. So is the subsidy How is that uh, going targeted to... at the wrong people? It, it is, no. it is, yeah? in, no. it is insufficient. The, the... It is too short to cover know, the nakedness of Kenyans. What, what uh, Senator wants to tell us, that today in Homer Bay County, we don't have supermarkets that have unga. That one will be wrong. No, it I, means I, I, guess, I guess, I guess his Joe, point, but, but Joe, I guess his point is that one. You, you brought not in 300,000. Not everybody and goes to the supermarket, million. right? Yeah. That I, the Goro Goro that he's talking about yes. is not subsidized. It That's is not fact, subsidized. No, no, it and is. even if you wanted yeah. to subsidize and, 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 it, you have brought in 300,000 okay. 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 against a consumption okay. Okay. of let's, 3 million. Let, yeah, let, I've let's just come from home. Speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think uh, right now at home, a Goro Goro is going at 80. So, uh, and, and you know, it depends. No, that's one so kilo. So why is it that's going at 80? Why not is the, it going at not 80? The two kilos, kilo. Not the two kilos, mm. the one kilo. Uh -huh. What no, I want to expensive. say, mm. yes, it's still expensive. And all I want to tell the government, because it's, it's good to be honest, that it is important when you bring this flour. I know even at home, it has not arrived all over. But in Kakamega, it is there. So if it has not arrived in uh, Homer Bay, that should be but another issue. But we have issue. a problem here but because uh, Senator Kajuang's uh, 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 family is looking for the subsidized maize. He well, can afford Senator it even Kajuang's if it's 500. Is, so the point, no, no, the point, to, 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 no, no, to, the point to, I'm making, uh, Senator, which is important here is that the subsidy is a blanket subsidy that even the people subsidy. who can afford, because subsidies the world over are usually meant yeah. to cushion the most vulnerable, vulnerable in society. So here there are people who have uh, fat salaries and they are part of that subsidy. And the people who need the subsidy in uh, Kakamega, where you're uh, talking about, they, they, they can't afford their Goro Goro because it is not, quite strictly speaking, subsidized. Well, well I think what we need, to, and, and that is one thing also uh, the minister should look at. The CS should look at the logistics of how he's transporting the maize. Don't forget these are the, the, the same strategic uh, reserves that we have uh, were, were used also during the drought time. So uh, as much as we talk about uh, the commercial part of it, we also have to ask ourselves, what is the social part of it? Where we had drought in uh, Mandera and other parts to Rukana, and they had to use the same strategic reserves. So for me, what I want the government to do, and I think this is one of the cries I kept on saying, that while you, you subsidize maize, you have to look at milk, you have to look at sugar, but then ask yourself, what is also the long term in all this? Because what we have, and, and, and that is one thing I would want to tell my senator here, you cannot play with it politics. I mean, this politics of saying we're going to play at a, uh, NASA when you come in, you can manage. No, 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 no. Let's not lie okay, to Kenyans let's, on let's, that. let's hear some Kenyans we spoke to a little bit earlier on this issue so that you can respond from a point of information from Kenyans. <laughs> Nilijaribu kusanya hizo pesa ndiyo nipate pesa za kununua unga. Uh -huh. So ilibidi niwache kitu kama sukuma uh -huh. na ndiyo niweze kupata kwa afford sukari, uh -huh. eh, unga na kwa sababu kiwa na sukari unaweza kuna ugali na sukari na maisha isonge mbele. Ugali na sukari. Yeah. Asante. Umego, umepigia kura mgombeaji sukari. Kwa nini umesema unaweza kuishi bila sukari maisha wakiwa mipanda juu? Unajua kwanza kila chakula iko na sukari. Na kama kila chakula iko na sukari, ninaweza kuridhika na ile yenye uko huko kwa chakula. Ni ile iko kwa chakula niachane na hii yenye ninanunua. Mm. Pia sukari pia unajua bei yake inaandamana na house rent. Mm -hmm. So ukinunua sukari mara tatu hivi, hiyo ni house rent. Kwa ni niachane na sukari. Now. 
All right, that was my colleague Lofty Matambo speaking to people because we were conducting a poll on the streets asking people what they would sacrifice or what they have already sacrificed in the face of the rising cost of living. And uh, very many of them, actually a vast majority of them said they would give up sugar. So one of them saying, well, there's sugar in everything. But the next group, I think, was milk. So there are people who are saying, I'll give up sugar, I'll give up milk. Unga, not so much. Only two people in that entire thing, out of probably 50 people who took part in it, said they would give up unga. So critical, critically important, this unga, unga thing that yes. we're discussing. Yes, because unga is important. You do gali, you can still do uh, uji. And uh, in the same unga, you can ferment and have something different with it. So I think that is why it becomes more critical. And uh, I think it's our main stable food as, as a country. Mm -hmm. and, and not just, uh, th th there were days we used to say it's for only Western, but it has become a Kenyan staple food. Let's, let's move forward quickly and speak about something that the government said would improve food security in the country. And this is the Galana Kulalo Irrigation Project that uh, was supposed to, 7 billion shillings allocated to it, 10,000 acres was supposed to be under irrigation. As a matter of fact, we were told that it would bring down the price of unga ultimately to about 80 shillings. But um, from what we have heard, only 70,000 bags, the last time I checked, were produced only 2,500 acres out of the 10,000 that we had been told about initially. Um, what went wrong? I think one, they had to follow what uh, the, uh, the consultant uh, advised. And I think uh, one of the things the Israeli said is that you cannot just come and just plant blanketly. You have to do samples of the land and how it is. Uh, that is one thing I think most of us uh, don't do, even uh, back home right now. We are having a challenge of different soils because of the different, either we've planted so much sugar cane, so when you're bringing back in maize, it's not, fa it's not uh, growing well. So that is one of the things that went wrong, that they were told very well, you have to do samples of the different maize and breeds that you can use. Looking at the coastal area where they wanted, there was also heat. You have to look at the moist and many other things that agriculturalists, I think, uh, understand better. So I think that was one of the things they, 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 had, they were so optimistic. But uh, when you come to reality, they have to follow. And what, we didn't know all of that? And uh, Well, I from think the word go? from the word go, uh, looking at the area, I think it's not an area that had had uh, planted maize for a while. So I think that well, was Well, I mean, thing. yeah, that is but, exactly what the general manager of NIB, Gitonga Mugambi, said. This is land that has never been cultivated since the beginning of the world. So finding out which varieties will do well takes time. That sounds fair, Senator Kajan. You know, it's, it's, it's an insult to the people who live in that area. It's like a Christopher Columbus kind of moment that uh, they've just discovered some part of the world. Uh, where no one has ever grown. There are people who live in that particular vicinity, and these are some of the poorest people in this country. I do remember we went on a visit, I believe I was with Senator Ilachi, around that area with the National Cohesion Committee, and the conflict that is arising in, in that area is a result of food. You cannot tell us this Galana is a monumental failure. In fact, it is going to be one of the biggest scandals of the Jubilee administration. It gets to a point where you must admit that, yes, we made a mistake, because government is not like you and I, Joe, who goes and buys land in a river and you start planting. They are processes. They are very rigorous processes. We've got, we had a partner who came from Israel that uh, are experts in these kind of things. You cannot tell us after sinking in billions of shillings that there are certain things that you, you hadn't thought of. Probably, if you look at it differently, Joe, we could ask ourselves, if we wanted to put a million acres under irrigation, should it be consolidated in one area, or should we be looking at the 47 counties and be talking of uh, maybe, what, uh, uh, 50,000 acres under irrigation per county? That way, we spread it out. That way, we'll be able to specialize uh, across, across the counties. So okay, this thanks. So hold, hold, hold on to that thought, because we need to, to take a break, and then we'll come back. But before we do that, I would just want to do something here and to get tomorrow's stories today. And uh, for many of you who know that there's a printing press up here, so we just want to get some of the newspapers that are coming from the... This is called Hot of the Press, so I'll just give uh, my guests here. 
And I get another one. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> All right, great. So we'll be taking that break, but when we come back, yes. uh, we'll be talking about Kulalugalana some more here. Here.